Let us now look at how we grow the numbers. How many birds do you start with? Um, I'm going to give different scenarios of how we can do this. And remember, this is just serving as a guidance for you to be able to use as you venture into your business. Let's start with scenario one, where we are going to use a broody hen to grow our flock. We start with six birds, one healthy cock, and five healthy hens. Plan to have at least four hens broody at the same time. Give each hen 10 eggs to brood after you have collected the eggs. In 21 days, the eggs will hatch into chicks. And assuming we are, we are working with a 75% hatch rate under proper conditions, then we shall get 30 chicks in number. In a year, one hen can hatch three to four times under normal circumstances. That is good management practices in place. If, if it broods the chicks herself. That means if we take our 30 chicks and we multiply by 4, we could easily get 120 chicks in a year. That is, of course, different batches. Let us look at another scenario where we use artificial brooding instead of letting our broody hen rear our chicks. Again, we start with 6 birds, 1 healthy cock and 5 hens. We plan to have at least four hens broody at the same time. Give each hen 10 eggs to brood after collecting. And in 21 days, the eggs will hatch into chicks. And assuming our 75% hatch rate under normal conditions, we will be able to get that chicks in number. It is important to note that one hen can hatch up to seven times if the chicks are taken away for artificial brooding in a near. So in this scenario, we are taking away the chicks immediately they are hatched. So taking away our 30 chicks, and if we are able to hatch up to 7 times in a year, that would give us 210 chicks in a year. And these numbers are just for guidance. This is recommended, especially when we are in business and we want to make more money out of the business that we are in. So once the chicks are hatched, then we take them away and use an artificial brooder to brood the chicks to adult stage. And with proper management, especially for artificial brooding, it's very important that you do this process correctly. Make sure the lighting is proper, the brooding aspects, the feeding, the heat, the temperatures, so that you're able to have a good survival rate for the, these chicks. And if we apply a 95% survival rate, that means our management aspects are top-notch, then we shall be able to have at least 200 chicks surviving out of the 210 from these different batches that we have. That means in an year, you'd have raised 210 chicks that will now eventually grow into growers and eventually into layers. Then once you have fully achieved your flock size, your desired flock size, then you can continue expanding your business and you can now start selling your fertilized eggs. You can start selling chicks to other farmers and this becomes an extra source of revenue for you. It is important to keep in mind that improved breeds do not brood. So you will not, or rather you will need to use pure chicken to do this or you'll have to have an incubator to assist in the artificial process. Let me give another example, but this time using more number of hens and cocks. And in this scenario, we're going to start with 12 birds, that is 10 hens and 2 cocks. Plan to have at least 7 hens broody and give each 10 eggs. In 21 days, the eggs will hatch into chicks. And assuming our 75% hatch rate under normal conditions, we'll be able to get 52 chicks in number. In a near, we said before that one hen can hatch three to four times under normal circumstances if it has to raise the chicks. So assuming our 52 chicks and hatching of four times in a year, that gives us 208 chicks of different batches in one year. Again, I'll repeat. These numbers 
are subject to good management and survival rates and you should preferably use this as a guidance. The cock and hen ratio is very important as well so that you're able to get fertilized eggs. And healthy is the key word here for your flock always. Let us now use the same scenario we have discussed and see what would happen if we decided to use artificial brooding. Again, we are going to start with 12 birds, two, two healthy hens and two cocks as well. Plan to have at least seven hens broody and give each 10 eggs. In 21 days, the eggs will hatch into chicks and assuming our 75% hatch rate, we shall get 52 chicks. We said earlier that in a year, one hen can hatch up to seven times if the chicks are taken away for artificial brooding. And for this purpose, we are using artificial brooding. So if we take our 52 chicks, multiply by seven, that means in a year we could have 364 chicks of different batches. Again, I'll say these numbers are subject to good management and survival rates. And you should preferably use this just as a guidance to guide you as you start your journey on how to grow your flock. The cock to hen ratio must be adhered to as well. Very important. As we wind up the course, a few remarks to put forth. For successful poultry farming, cleanliness and hygiene go hand in hand. These are two things that you cannot escape doing. Cleanliness, hygiene, you have to practice. It doesn't matter the kind of production system you are in, whether you are small scale or large scale. If you want to succeed as a poultry farmer, hygiene and cleanliness have to be something that is practiced day in, day out in your farm. It is important to source your birds from reputable farms or hatcheries. If you are not able to do this for yourself, if you are not able to hatch the chicks yourself, then ensure that when you are sourcing, you are sourcing from reputable places. It is important to always adhere or rather following up on the vaccination schedules that have been advised or recommended for your area. Be alert always and notice when there is a change in your flock so that you are able to take immediate action. Record keeping, very, very important. This is your best friend when it comes to doing any kind of business and especially in poultry farming. Record keeping allows you to understand what happens in your farm day in, day out. And again, we are saying it doesn't matter whether you are doing this for small scale or large scale. It is very important that you keep those records. Seeking vet veterinary professional's advice is recommended, especially when carrying out routine management practices like vaccination, or more so when your birds require the treatment. When you feel the need for a veterinary expert to come on board, don't hesitate to call them. We always say have a number or two or three of a vet, veterinary technician, a veterinary doctor that you can always call for advice or to come and support you in your farm. Start small and grow steady, one step at a time, one step at a time, learn through the process. Anyone can start and grow if you do things the right way, doing things the right way, having all the knowledge, doing all the research, understanding what you're getting yourself into important before you put the action into place. At Ilengo, we encourage, educate, and enable you as a farmer to gain all the relevant information that is required for you to be able to walk through your farming journey successfully. We have so many other courses in poultry. For example, we have a course on Kenyeji farming. That is for anyone who is doing local birds. We have a feed and nutrition course. We have a course that focuses on layers, that is layers production. We have a course on feed formulation for broilers and layers as well. We have also a course on biosecurity and we also have another course on vaccination and common diseases. Why not go to our website farmcourses.com and join these courses so that you're able to be more empowered and more informed as you walk through your poultry journey as a farmer. Thank you very much for your time and we are looking forward to hear your successful stories once you venture into the business.